Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. We can start whenever you are ready, Maharaj. Okay. Om Magyan. Thank you, Maharaj. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare Welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Sri Ishopanishad. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharajis. Everybody can hear me okay? Yeah? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Maharaj. Hare Maharaj. Okay, good. So yesterday we were studying uh, how the worship of the Absolute is different from worshipping what is not the Absolute. And Prabhupada was giving examples about some common, common slogans which are put into the minds of people, which are put into the minds of innocent people. Prabhupada was telling how some people think that Oh, all the paths lead to the same goal, right? So, if somebody says oh, all the paths lead to the same goal, how are we going to argue with them? Have you got some reason to say that this is not correct? Can you justify that this is not correct? How will we approach? What will we say? Ram Gopinath Prabhu, what will you say? Yeah, Maharaj. Uh, so, Prabhupada has given an analogy of uh, a person starting by train from Bombay can reach the destination by which he has purchased his ticket. He gave the analogy. Yeah, right. If they buy the ticket to go to Calcutta, they cannot expect they're going to go to Delhi. It's different. So different paths go to different. And how 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 do you support this? Have you got any scriptural evidence? Do you know what the Bhagavad Gita says to defeat this? To the Parampara Maharaj, Parampara system. No, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is speaking. The, there's a verse there which Prabhupada quotes. It says that. The Who is that? Are you referring uh, Jolin? Jolin here. Are you referring to Bhagavad Gita chapter ten, text eight? I am the source of all spiritual and world. No, I'm not referring to that verse. Oh. No. That doesn't really relate to what we're talking about. We, we, because we're saying that some people say that all paths lead to the same thing. 
And so how can we prove that they don't? In the Bhagavad Gita there's a verse which says, one who worships the demigods goes to the planets of the demigods. One who worships the forefathers go to the planets of the forefathers. One who worships the ghosts will go to the planet of the ghosts. And one who worships Krishna, they will come to Krishna. Yanti deva yata devan pitran yanti pitran vritarha bhutani yanti bhuteja madbhakta yanti mamikam. Right? Like that. There's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita which says, the worshippers of the devas, they will go to that planet. Remember we said, if you worship the sun god, you go to the sun planet. You worship the moon god, you go to the moon planet. You worship the forefathers, you go to the forefathers. You don't all go the same place. It's not all one. This is what some people are saying. They're saying it's all one, it's all the same. It's not all the same. You get a different result. So we argue like that by logic. We say you buy a ticket, it goes to the place where you buy the ticket too. That's logic. And then on the basis of authority, scriptural authority, we quote the Bhagavad Gita. So we prove to them it's not all one. Then some people, they will say, Manava Seva, Madhava Seva. They will say, service to man is service to God. You know, people are very common people, less intelligent people. They're very fond of this welfare work. So, how will we talk about this? What do we, uh, how do we argue about this? Any ideas? Anybody? Nantini, do you know? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Who is this? Sakya Rasa Maharaj. Sakya Rasa Mataji, okay. Do you know the answer to this question? Maharaj, can we quote Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, text 23? What, what is that verse? Men of small intelligence worship the demigods, and their fruits are limited and temporary. Those who worship the demigods go to the planets of the demigods, but my devotees ultimately reach my supreme planet. Okay, well that's related to what we were talking about earlier, that it's not all one. But now I'm on a new topic. Right? Okay. Now I'm on a new topic. I'm saying service to man is service to God and we should just work, do welfare work for the poor people and we should try to help people, the poor people, feed the poor and uh, take care, you know, do this kind of thing, open a school, open hospitals, no need for temples, no need to worship deities, just wor worship people. You know, see God in the people and worship the people. So, what will you say? Is it regarding uh, pouring water to the roots of the tree? Yeah, that's a good example, right. Yeah, good. You know the example? Tell me, tell me uh, the example, fully explain it. Don't... Krishna is like... Don't, don't read that. I don't want you to read. I want you to use your own words. Instead of uh, watering the root, uh, watering the root, uh, unintelligent people water the, the leaves and the branches. So water, not... When we water the root, everyone will be satisfied. So Krishna is considered as the root of a plant where leaves and branches are everyone, all the living entities and uh, all the demigods and everybody. Okay, yes. So welfare activities are like that. They're just like watering the leaves and the branches. 
how many people can be satisfied, how many people can be served. We can only serve a few people, but we have to serve God. God is in the heart of all living entities. Not that we just only serve the poor people. That is wealth, that is bodily activity. You feed people one day, then they're hungry tomorrow. It never stops. There's no end. You take care of some people, then there's more people. There's always, there's no end. You can never satisfy everyone. But if we, sat, if we serve Krishna, then everyone will be satisfied and all the needs will be taken care of. So we want to serve Krishna because as Sakyaras Mataji said, Krishna is the root of the creation. So when we serve Krishna. That we say Manava Seva is Madhava Seva. By serving Madhava, we're serving people. By serving the Lord, then all the people become happy, they all benefit. They're all satisfied. Just like if we teach people Krishna consciousness, they will all learn how to be a good person. But if you just feed people or you, if you give money to people, you give shelter to people, they'll still go on with their bad habits. Smoking, drinking, meat eating, all of these things will go on. And if we give money for these things, if we help people to do these things, then we get the karma. We have to suffer. So why should we give them money to do their sinful activities? No, we should train them to be devotees. If they become devotee of Krishna, then they will stop. A devotee of Krishna is naturally vegetarian. We don't train people just to be vegetarian. We train people be a devotee. One who is a devotee will have all the good qualities. He will also be a, he will be a vegetarian, he will be clean, he will be honest, he won't steal, he'll follow the principles, right? Is it clear? Any questions? Jolene, any question? Maharaj. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, when we serve the people and they become devotees, that is the right way to serve, is it, Maharaj? Yes. Yes. When we when we and, bring people to Krishna consciousness, that's the right way. And then, Maharaj. Uh, but these people are also manasa manasan, right? We are serving the manasan, and but they have to become devotees, then we serve them. Not when they are just people at large. Well, we have to know how to serve them. We serve them by giving them Krishna consciousness, right? We have to bring them. We have to bring them up to the transcendental platform. We don't want to just only help them materially. That's that's not going to bring them to the trans. That's not going to get them free of the material energy. If you just only help them materially, they will remain in the mode of goodness and passion and ignorance. But if we give them Krishna consciousness, then they will come up. They will come up to the transcendental platform. Look at the plane. It's super, super Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, does that mean that giving charity is uh, wrong? You have to know who to give charity to. If you give charity, okay. if you give charity to the wrong person, you get the karma. Oh, okay. Prabhupada writes in the Bhagavad Gita, when you study the Bhagavad Gita, you will see it's discussed there in the 16th, 17th chapter about giving charity. Because you can give charity in the mode of ignorance. If you give charity to the wrong person and they use your money to, to, to drink or buy drugs or something, then you get the karma. So you have to be very careful who we give charity to. We're very careful. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I do I do get um quite a number of response like uh Jolene, why do you pray to Krishna? If you pray to Krishna you you become materially poor. You become what? You 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 will become poor. Become poor? You become materially poor. And, and sometimes I get why do you pray, pray to Krishna? Lord Shiva is the supreme. And if you, if you want to pray to Lord Shiva, maybe you should pray to Lord Vishnu. He is the creator. Krishna is just a small pastime of well, Vishnu and there is no need for you to pray to Krishna. These are people who don't understand everything properly. Yes. They haven't been educated properly. They haven't read all the scriptures. Lord Vishnu is not different from Krishna. Vishnu is the expansion from Krishna. You see, Krishna is the original and from Krishna Vishnu comes. So Vishnu or Vishnu or Narayan, Narayan, we were reading yesterday about Narayan. Sometimes we use the word Vishnu, sometimes they say Narayan. Vishnu or Narayan is expansion from Krishna. Krishna is the original, supreme. And Lord Shiva, he is the God. There's in the material world we have the three gods: Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. So Shiva is here in the material world. He's God here in the material world. So yeah, we offer our respect to Shiva, but Shiva is not the supreme. You see, he he is powerful, but we we respect him. But we know he he's not the supreme personality. Above him is Krishna. But ordinary people, common people, they don't know, they have not been so educated. And Krishna is not poor, Krishna is Bhagavan. Now Lord Shiva, he's usually poor, he lives under a tree with his wife. They live together under a tree. They don't even have a house, they just live under a tree. But he's very happy, he's satisfied, and his wife is very powerful. But they're happy to live simply. Now, devotee, a devotee, you may say devotee is not rich, material, may not have a lot of money. Not all, de some devotees may be rich, you know, some people have some money, but not all. But they have a special wealth, they have wealth in their peace of mind and in their happiness and satisfaction. That is the greatest wealth. They have peace of mind, they have a peaceful home, they live happily, satisfied. They're not worried about a lot of material things. You know, many people may worship Lord Shiva and they may get a lot of wealth, they may get a lot of money, but they don't get peace of mind. And they're often fond of intoxication, and they're often angry and very passionate. They're not really happy. That's the difference. Hmm? You understand? Jolene? Jolene, can you hear? Hare Krishna? Hare Krishna Maharaj, I can hear. We can hear you, Maharaj. Okay, any other question? Jolene, was that all right? Sorry, Maharaj, I got disconnected. I will check the recording tomorrow. Oh, you got disconnected. I wondered what happened, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maharaj, can I ask you one question, Maharaj, one more question? Yeah, please. Uh, Maharaj, uh, do, do the Mayavadis and the Fiso uh, practitioners, do they worship Lord Shiva most of the time? Yes, often. Because their, their, their goal, their thinking, their goal is to become one. So they're thinking Lord Shiva, he's just a form of the, he, but he's not really. They think ultimately everything is just light, you see. 
So they think Lord Shiva, he's just the representation of the light. But ultimately we're going to, their goal is to merge into the light. So they think of Lord Shiva like that, you see, they think he's just a symbol representing the Brahman, the spirit, and we enter into the oneness. So they have that kind of understanding. They see, they say, Shiva is God, Shiva is light. But they don't think, where does the light come from? If he is light, where does the light come from? Actually, Lord Shiva is also a devotee. He's also a devotee of Krishna. But not everybody knows that. Because often people, there are two kinds of Shiva devotees. Some people worship Shiva for material blessings. They want to get something material. They say especially if, if you worship Lord Shiva, you get a very good wife. And some women, they worship Shiva, and I've, I've seen that when they worship Shiva, they do have, they have a good husband. So uh, Lord Shiva, he's the best husband, and so you worship Lord Shiva, you get a good husband. Some people may worship Shiva's wife and get a good wife, like Parvati, like this. Uh, but some, often people worship Lord, Sh Lord Shiva to get wealth or to get power. But they get these material things, but they don't get peace of mind, they don't get happiness. And other people, a few people, may worship Shiva to get merged, to get liberation, to enter into the oneness. They think ultimately God is light, and Shiva represents the light. So they worship Lord Shiva, but they think ultimately there's only the light, there's only the oneness, there's not... A, it's all just oneness, there's no variety. So Shiva is just a means into that oneness, like that. So they don't really believe in Lord Shiva, but they may worship like that, with that understanding that he will help them to get into the liberation. Okay? Any other questions? More questions? Maharaj. Yes. Hare Krishna, I'm not hearing anything. Uh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes. Uh, something went wrong. Maharaj, uh, Sudama, the devotee of Lord Krishna, also received, also got a lot of uh, riches from Krishna. Yes. Right. Yes, he did. So we can. So we cannot say that uh, Krishna didn't give any wealth to anybody there. Even the devotees of Krishna is also rich. Yeah, some devotees get. Yeah, Sudama actually he didn't want wealth. He 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 tried to stay away from wealth, but Krishna forced him to take it. Krishna made him take it. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, yes, Sudama, yes, Sudama got a lot of wealth. He didn't really want wealth, but Krishna wanted to give him. He did. Krishna doesn't like that we're, but that we have these conditions. You know, some people they want wealth, or better you don't have it. Some people don't want wealth. He'll give you wealth just so that you can become detached from this situation. He doesn't want us to become too attached, either to having it or not to having it. That's the idea. So sometimes he will give, and sometimes he won't give, according to what's good for us, to help us to advance, to become more Krishna conscious. Okay, we'll go ahead. We're going to look at the next mantra. Okay, Maharaj, thank you, Maharaj. What mantra? Mantra 14, right? Yes, Maharaj, mantra 14. Okay, who would like to chant the mantra for us?
Oh, who's not chanted for us for a long time? Indrani Mataji, can you chant for us? She's not here, Maharaj. She's not here, okay. So, what about Tanush, Tanusha Mataji? Can you chant? Tanusha? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Please. Thank you. One more. Sambuti. Sambuti cha vinasham cha. Sambuti cha vinasham cha. Vinasham cha. Yashtad vedo bayam saha. Yashtad vedo bayam saha. Vinasena mrityam tirtva. Vinasena mrityam tirtva. Sambutya mrtam asnute. Sambutya mrtam asnute. Good translation. One should know perfectly the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna and his transcendental name, form, qualities, and pastimes, as well as the temporary material creation with his with its temporary demigods, men and animals. When one knows this, he surpasses the death and the ephemeral cosmic manifestation with it. And in the eternal kingdom of God, he enjoys his eternal life of bliss and knowledge. All right. So in this mantra is telling us that we have to know about Krishna and his place, the, the spiritual sky. We have to know about Krishna's name, form, quality, pastimes. And we, then we also have to know about the material creation. So it's not only just know about Krishna, but we have to know also about the material creation. Because if we don't know about the material creation, we may become confused. And we may think, oh, this is God, oh, they're, they're God, or they're, they're very great. So we have to know also about the demigods and the men and animals and all these things. And then we can get into the spiritual sky. Okay, go ahead. Tanusha, read first paragraph. By its so-called advancement of knowledge, human civilization has created many material things including spaceships and atomic energy. Yet it has failed to create a situation in which people need not to die, take birth again, become old and suffer from disease. When, whenever an intelligent man raises the question of his miseries before a so-called scientist, the scientist very cleverly replies that, that material science is progressing and that ultimately it will be possible to render man deathless, ageless, and diseaseless. Such answers prove the scientist's gross ignorance of material nature. In material nature, everyone is under the stringent laws of matter and must pass through six stages of existence birth, growth, maintenance, production of byproducts, deterioration, and Finally, death. No one in contact with material nature can be beyond these six laws of transformation. Therefore, no one, whether demigod, man, animal, or plant, can survive forever in the material world. Thank you. So, try to understand here the point Srila Prabhupada is making. nature of the material world. What, what, do you, what can we say about the law of the material world? What's the nature of this material world, Tanusha? Birth, death, old age and disease, Maharaj. Right, yes. Birth, death, old age and disease. And is that only for people? Uh, no, Maharaj, it's for everyone, all the living beings. All the living beings, all the animals, yes. all the plants. the plants, the trees, the fish, the birds, yeah. Yes, Maharaj. So, the, but Prabhupada said, you know, science is working very hard 
Just like now science, they're working very hard to find a cure for this disease, this COVID virus. Did they find the cure yet? No, Maharaj. No, we never heard they found any cure yet. So many scientists, so many, they studied so much, so many big brains, they're working for big companies. Did they find any cure? No. Just so many people, so many people dying. But they're saying, in the future, in the future, we will, no more disease. In the future, no more old age. Is it possible? No, Maharaj. No, it's not possible. It's not possible. P Prabhupada says, it's, it's like the man goes to, if you go to buy the house and you say, I will give, I, you want to buy the house, it's one million dollar. So you say, just now I have no money, but I will give you post eighty check. I will give you check for maybe in the future, you know. <laughs> just today I have no money, but in the future I will give you check. And <laughs> but just today I have no money. And so scientists are like that. They're like the man, he goes to buy, wants to buy the house. There's no money, but he tells the man, I'll give you post-dated check in the future. Today is no money in my account, but in the future, after I make some, you know, you can cash the check. I'll give you the check for one million dollars, but just today I have no money, nothing in my account. So, scientists is like that. They're saying, in the future, in the future we will do it, very soon. Just now coming. No, it's not possible. It's the law of material nature. Mm, we have to understand the laws of material nature. So then we go through the six different stages of life, beginning with what? Um, birth? Beginning with birth? Yes. And we take birth, right? Everyone takes birth. We all took birth, not only us, you know, even the, the dogs and the cats and the birds, they all take their birth. Some are born from the egg, some are born from the womb, some are born from perspiration, different places we take birth from. Some are born from the ground. So we all take birth in different ways and then we begin to grow, right? We should grow. If we're not healthy, we won't grow, but we should grow. And then we grow for some time, but do we keep growing? No. How long do you grow for? How long, how long do people grow for? Uh, until... Until they go, they get old, Maharaj? No, no, no. You don't keep growing. You grow for... You grow... Oh, you grow until like certain age, like around 20, 20 something. Oh, no. 20 plus. Not even so long. No. What? Maharaj. How? Yeah? We grow until... We grow... We grow vertically until 18. We grow horizontally after that. <laughs> we grow till about 18, yeah. Maybe even younger, some, maybe about 18, yeah. After 18, that's about it. You're not going to grow now after that. So then maintain for some time. Maintain means you don't grow taller anymore. But then after, after you maintain for some time, oh, you may produce some, some byproducts. Just like you may get married, you have a child. Right? Yeah, so this is like a byproduct from the body. Produce some byproducts, some children, offspring. But then deterioration. We start to get old. The, the nice black hair begins to go gray. Right? Goes gray and then it grows white. And the face also, the skin becomes slack and we get so many wrinkles. And then, finally, death. Right? And with death, 
then take another body, and then again birth, again the same thing. Go through these different stages. So six stages. So no one in contact with material nature can go beyond the six, six laws of transformation. So we have to understand the nature of the material world. You see, this is what the mantra is saying. We have to know about the material world and we have to know about the spiritual world also. Okay. So who... Jo jo Jolene, would you like to read? Yes, Maharaj. The duration of life varies according to species. Lord Brahma, the chief living being within this material universe, lives for millions and millions of years, while a minute germ lives for some, while a minute germ lives for some hours only. But no one in the material world can survive eternally. Things are born or created under certain conditions. They stay for some time, and if they continue to live, they grow procreate, gradually dwindle, and finally vanish. According to these laws, even the Brahmas, of which there are millions in different universes, are all liable to death either today or tomorrow. Therefore, the entire material universe is called Martyaloka, the place of death. Okay, thank you. So we're hearing about the material world some more, right? It said millions of Brahmas. It said even the Brahmas of whom there are millions in different universes. So we, you have to understand in each universe there is one Brahma. And there are many, many universes in the material world. And in each of the universes, there's one Brahma. So Brahma is a position. It's a position which is given to someone. He's the first, the first person to take the birth in, the material, in each material universe. Okay, but the Brahmas also, they have to die. Even the Brahmas are liable to death, today or tomorrow. Of course, they live a long time, but they're also taking birth and dying. And Prabhupada gives examples in the beginning. Tiny germs, they're living only a very short time. They take birth in the night, in the morning they're all dead. We see sometimes. And Brahma, he lives for millions of years of our time. And tiny insects, they live just a few hours. So this is the nature of the material world. Things are born, they grow, all of these different things. Some live a long life and some live a short life. But they still go through the six laws. They take birth, they grow, they maintain. They dwindle, they produce byproducts, and they die. Okay? So. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes? So we say that the only place that is not liable to death would be Vaikuntha Loka, right? Yes, we have to go beyond the material world. Get out of the material world. We, we get to Vaikuntha Loka, uh, would we come down from there? Well, we, is there any chance of getting kicked up again? Well, you see, there are people also, just like we said, there are some impersonalists. They may go to the spiritual sky, but they don't go to the Vaikuntha Loka. They just go into the light. They just go into the Brahma Jyoti, the light which is there in the spiritual sky. So they're happy just to be in the light because they just want the oneness. 
So they enter into the light of the oneness in the spiritual sky. And they stay there for some time. And when they get tired or when they get bored there, then they come back to the material world. But generally, if somebody goes into the Vaikuntha Loka, into the Vaikuntha planets, then in the Vaikuntha planets there's so many activities, there's wonderful pastimes and association, and you never want to come back. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, one who comes to my abode never leaves there. Because it's so wonderful, you don't want to come back. No, just like when you go, sometimes when you, when you go to visit the Holy Dham, it's so wonderful, you never want to come back, right? So Goloka or Vaikuntha, Vaikuntha Loka is like that, it's so wonderful, it's all, everyone's a devotee there and the atmosphere is so pleasing that you go there, you never want to come back. But this world, this place, this is Mrityaloka, the place of death. All the time we see people dying, so many people are dying here in India because of this virus. All the time more and more people dying. And if it's not the virus, still they die. There's so many other causes for death. Before the virus, people were also dying. Cancer, malaria. So many problems, so many disease. Because this is the material world. This is not the place, you cannot live here forever. It's the place where we're not meant to be really happy. There's no real happiness here. We're trying to be happy, but this is not the right place to find the real happiness. Okay, go ahead, material scientist, Jolene. Material scientists and politicians are trying to make this place deathless because they have no information of the deathless spiritual nature. This is due to their ignorance of the Vedic literature, which contains full knowledge confirmed by a mature transcendental experience. Unfortunately, Modern man is averse to receiving knowledge from the Vedas, Puranas and other scriptures. Right. You see, this is the problem that the scientists and the politicians, they are trying to promise us, oh, a long life, we'll live a very long life. They, 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 very soon the science is improving, we won't die, we won't get disease. It's not possible. If we want to avoid death, we have to go to this, the spiritual world, not here, not in the material world. Material world means temporary world, place of birth and death. But in the spiritual world, eternal life and eternal life and happiness also. So. People don't know, they're not educated, they didn't read the Vedas, they didn't hear these scriptures. We have to teach them. Okay, go ahead. Who's, who would like to read? Madhu Tausi, Mataji. Mad yes, Maharaj, I read. Maharaj. Material scientists and politicians no, are no, trying no, to. No, we read that. We read that. We read that. From the Vishnu Purana. Oh, oh, sorry, Maharaj. From the Vishnu Purana, six uh, seven sixty one, we receive the following information: Vishnu Sakti Para Prokta Shetra Chinakya Tata Para Avitya Karma Samjanya Tirtya Sakti Ishyati. Lord Vishnu, the personality of Godhead, possesses different energies known as para superior and apara inferior the living entities belong to the superior energy the material energy in which we are presently entangled is the inferior energy the material creation is made possible by this energy which covers the living entities with ignorance avidya 
and induces them to perform fruitive activities. Yet, there is another part of the Lord's superior energy that is different from both this material, inferior energy and the living entities. That superior energy constitutes the eternal deathless abode of the Lord. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. Paras tasmatsu bhava nyo vyakto vyakta tanatanaha yasa sarveshu bhuteshu nasyatsu na vinashati Do you want me to continue, Maharaj? Yeah, because you just read the verse. Ah, uh, okay, yes. All the material planets, upper, lower and intermediate, including the Sun, Moon and Venus, are scattered throughout the universe. These planets exist only during the lifetime of Brahma. Okay, Some okay, lower okay. wait, wait, okay. Because, because it is not okay. relating to the verse, it's, it's not connecting with the verse. Okay. Okay, so, okay, so Prabhupada was describing the energies of the Krishna, right? Two energies. Para and Apara. Did you hear that before? Did we hear about Para and Apara before? Yes, Maharaj, yeah. Where? What did you hear? Where did we hear it? Do you remember? We were talking about Para and Apara what? Para and Apara Prakriti. Prakriti, right? Material nature. Material nature, can, it can be superior and inferior. So what is the, what is the inferior Prakriti? It's the material creation. Yes, right. And what's it made up of? Earth, water, ether. Earth, water, fire, fire. air and ether. Yes. And then three others, subtle elements, um, mind, mind, intelligence, intelligence. yes, mind, intelligence and ego, thank you. So this is all material energy, that's it, the, the inferior energy. But then the living entities are there, right? The living entities are the paraprakriti, superior. But what happened to them? What, what are they doing in the material world? Why did they come here in the material world? What happened? If we are the superior prakriti, we are superior prakriti, we are the spiritual, the, the superior energy, we belong in the spiritual world. Why are we in the material world? Because we want to enjoy Maharaj, so we're looking down. Yes. Yeah. And what? So what's it? What's the thinking? What? What's the difference between the spiritual world and the material? Do Do we not enjoy in the spiritual world? Why do we come to the material world to enjoy? In the spiritual world, we can also enjoy, isn't it? Why not go there? Why we come to the material world to enjoy? Because we want a lot of our material energy. Yes, we want a lot of, we want to enjoy. How do we want to enjoy it? We want to enjoy it independent of Krishna. Independent of Right, we're thinking ourselves independent of Krishna. We, in the spiritual world, what do, pe what do the living entities all think? Maharaj, can I say like, uh, we are envious of Krishna? In the material world, yes. In the ma yeah. Har Haribo, can you please yeah. cut, cut your mics down? Please, if you're speaking there, please close your mic. Yes, uh, we're sp in the material world, all are envious of Krishna, right? Uh, yes, what? Maharaj, can I say like, I thought in spiritual uh, world we were envious of Krishna and then we fall down to material world. Is that so, Maharaj? Well, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but it certainly, <laughs> certainly we have a desire to, to, get, to leave Krishna, to go away from Krishna. 
we are to be ind independent of Krishna. So when we think like that, then we immediately come into the material world. So then when we come into the material world, then Krishna, it says, Krishna covers the living entity. What's the covering? How does he cover us? What does he cover us with? Pollution, maya. Yeah, with ignorance, with avidya. Right? Prabhupada said he covers the, the living entity with ignorance. Avidya, what is that ignorance? What kind of, what ignorance? What do we think? In ignorance we're thinking... I am body Maharaj. Huh? I am this body Maharaj. Okay, I am the body, therefore what? If I'm the body, what can I do? Then I make myself the center of everything. Okay, we want to be the center of everything. Anything else? I think we are the diva. I want to enjoy, I want to enjoy the senses. Yeah, we want sense gratification. What did What did you say, Ram Gopinath? Yeah, we are thinking we are the doer. We are the doer. Yeah. Okay, we are thinking we are the doer. And we are thinking we can enjoy the results of our work. We think I work and I will enjoy. I will get the results. I will enjoy. So this is the idea. We are thinking I am the enjoyer. I am the doer. I am the enjoyer. So this is the illusion. You see, but actually this is not our position. Krishna is the enjoyer and we are the servants. It means we are enjoyed by Krishna. Our position is to be enjoyed. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes. Okay. So this is it, the uh, ignorance. We are thinking, I am the enjoyer. But Krishna is the real enjoyer. We are in, meant to be enjoyed. We are his servants. Prabhupada gives the example just like the husband and wife. Right? The wife is enjoyed by the husband. But the wife is also happy. She also gets pleasure in, in, being, in, in being enjoyed by the husband. She's happy. So the same way we are Krishna's servants and we are enjoyed by Krishna. But we are happy. I mean, this is our actual position. Okay? So then Prabhupada goes, he explains another part of the Lord's superior energy, different from both the material energy and the living entities. This, that superior energy. So Prabhupada goes on to talk about the spiritual world which is described here in the Bhagavad Gita in the 8th chapter verse number 20. It's describing that there is another place beyond this material world which is called, that's the spiritual sky. So it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, we'll go, can you go ahead Madhu Tulsi Maharaji, are you reading is it? Yes, Maharaj, I agree. Yeah, all the material. Some lower. All the material planets. I've already read that, Maharaj. Just uh, now. Uh, yeah, read it, read it again. I wanted to hear it again. Okay, sure. All the material planets, upper, lower, and intermediate, including the Sun, Moon, and Venus, are scattered throughout the universe. These planets exist only during the lifetime of Brahma. Some lower planets, however, are vanquished after the end of one day of Brahma and are again created during the next day of Brahma. On the upper planets, time is calculated differently. One of our years is equal to only 24 hours or one day and night. On many of the upper planets, the four ages of Earth Satya, Treta, Dwapara and Kali 
last only 12,000 years according to the time scale of the upper planets. Such a length of time multiplied by 1,000 constitutes one day of Brahma, and one night of Brahma is the same. Such days and nights accumulate into months and years, and Brahma lives for 100 such years. At the end of Brahma's life, the complete universal manifestation is vanquished. Okay, so Prabhupada is describing to us about the material world. He's, remember, in each, there are many universes in the material world. The material world is only one-fourth compared to the spiritual world. Spiritual sky, Vaikuntas, is much bigger, many more planets. Material world, there's many planets, many universes. And in each universe, there's one Brahma. And in each universe, there's also one sun. One sun in each universe and one moon in each universe. Okay? Because remember we said the planets, the universe is like a coconut, very dark. So you need the sun. And then Prabhupada is explaining about the time. He said uh, one year can be equal to 24 hours on the higher planets. So for Brahma, one 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 year is equal to one year of our time is equal to just one day of his time and brahma lives 100 years of his time not our time 100 years of his time and there's two kinds of devastation or annihilation there's one at the end of each day of brahma and one at the end of brahma's life at the end of Brahma's life, all the universe, the whole universe is vanquished, all finished. So that's the end of Brahma's life. But then after that Brahma, then there's another Brahma. Goes on. Okay, who's going to... Um, those living beings who reside on higher planets like the sun and the moon, as well as those on Martya Loka, the earth planet, and also those who live on lower planets are all merged into the water of devastation during the night of Brahma. During this time, no living beings or species remain manifest, although spiritually they continue to exist. This unmanifested stage is called Avyakta. Again, when the entire universe is vanquished at the end of Brahma's lifetime, there is another Avyakta state. But beyond these two unmanifested states, is another okay be, sorry but beyond these two unmanifested states is another unmanifested state the spiritual atmosphere or nature there are a great number of spiritual planets in these atmosphere and these planets exist eternally even when all these planets within this material universe are vanquished at the end of brahma's life okay uh no, but you should read that. There are many material universes, each under the jurisdiction of a Brahma, and this cosmic manifestation within the jurisdiction of the various Brahmas is but a display of one fourth of the energy of the Lord. Ekapat Pimbhoti. This is the inferior energy beyond the jurisdiction of Brahma is the spiritual nature, which is called Tripat Pimbhoti three-fourths of the Lord's energy. This is the superior energy of Paraprakriti. All right, thank you. So Prabhupada is giving us more detailed information how there's two kinds of annihilation. At the end of Brahma's day, the plan some planets are annihilated, only a few higher planets remain. And then at the end of Brahma's life, all the planets are annihilated. And the size of the, the material universe is one-fourth compared to the spiritual. So spiritual sky is three-fourths and the material sky is one-fourth. And we are in that one-fourth. The one-fourth is like the cloud portion. Just like in the sky, you may have a clear sky, one big cloud in the sky. So we are in that, under that cloud in the material world. We are in that inferior energy. Right? 
Okay, somebody else like to read? Who's? Somebody else continues. Can I please ask a question? Yes, please. Um, the, the line, during this time, no living beings or species remain manifest, although spiritually they continue to exist. What did Prabhupada mean by that? Oh, okay. So what happens then, you see? It's that during this time, no spiritual be that means that the whole material creation is all annihilated. What happens? All, all the living entities, they all enter into the body of Mahavishnu. Because the, everything, you see, at the time of creation, everything comes out from the body of Mahavishnu. So at the end of the life of Brahma, it's all taken back into the body of Mahavishnu. So all the living entities, they enter into the body of Mahavishnu and they enter into the body of Mahavishnu without a material body. They can, because the soul is eternal, right? The soul cannot die. So the souls enter into the body of Mahavishnu. It's just like we go to sleep at night. You go to sleep at night, you wake up in the morning. So the same way, at the time of the annihilation of the universe, all the living entities who are left, they enter into the body of the Mahavishnu and they stay there. And then when the time for the creation comes, then they all come out again and they take birth again, just like waking up in the morning. Can you understand? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, thank you for asking. It's a good point, yeah. Because we're all spiritual by nature. Actually, there's no death. What is death actually? How, would, how do we describe it? Do you remember? How did we describe death? Somebody else answer. Yes, Gandharvika, how do you describe death? Do you um, the changing garments, Maharaj. Right, the changing of the garments, just like the garments, you take off the garments, right? You go to, you go, you come home from work, you take off your jacket, you take off your, you know, you put on something ca casual, more relaxed, like that. So death is like that, you give up one body and then we get ready to take another body, like that, yeah, good. It's described in the Bhagavad Gita. Just like the clothes get old, we give them up, we get new dress, new clothes. The same way the body, the body breaks down, it gets disease, it's all useless, all the organs break down. You just get, okay, give it up, get a new body, no point to, you know, what do they do that, you know, nowadays, they take you to hospital and they, they, they give you new organs, transplant the organ from one, take it from another person and put the new organ in, even put the new heart in. Oh my, you know, and it's a big business, you pay so much money and you put the new organs in and this way you live in the new body with the new organs. You live a little longer. <laughs> How long can we live? Material body. Material body is temporary, it's not going to live forever. But, you know, we like to, we, people like to do that. We don't like to think of death. <laughs> we try to go against death. Okay, someone else read? Who hasn't read yet today? Kundalata Madhaji. Yes, Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Yeah, the predominating Supreme Person. Yes, the predominating Supreme Person residing within the spiritual nature is Lord Sri Krishna, as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 8.22. He can be approached only by unloyal devotional service and not by the process of jnani, philosophy, yoga, mystic, or karma, fruitive work. The karmis or fruitive workers 
can elevate themselves to the swarga loka planet which include the sun and the moon gnanis and yogis can attain still higher planet such as the mahar loka tapar loka and brahma loka and when they become still more qualified through devotional service they can enter into the spiritual nature either the illuminating cosmetic atmosphere of the spiritual sky brahman or the vaikuntha planet according to their qualification it is certain however that no one can enter into the spiritual vaikuntha planet without being trained in devotional service okay so who can go to who 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 is going to up to heavenly planets which ones are going to heavenly planets gnanis karmis no the yogis the, the gnanis are not going to go to heavenly planets the gnanis go above the heaven who goes to the heavenly planets karmis are doing that. yeah the karmi the fruit of workers right yes. they want to they want to go to swarga loka swarga loka means heaven they want to go to heaven why why would they want to go there they want to enjoy yeah can you enjoy good there in heaven mm. Yeah, they like. <laughs> What's there? What's there to enjoy? How do how will they enjoy? What what is there to enjoy in the heaven? They will drink. They will uh, you know. Yeah, they, they will. Will, they will drink the somaras. They have a special thing yes. there. They don't just yeah. drink the ordinary alcohol like here. they will drink somaras and what somaras. else will they enjoy girls yeah girls. the women are very beautiful there very beautiful every woman is very beautiful and all the men are very strong and handsome and intelligent it's heavenly planets what do they need to go there what's the qualification they will do the fruit activity uh, fruit punya karma yes yes, yes punya karma right they have to do pious activities they have to do pious activities to go there so that's right they go there and and they can enjoy their pious activities can they stay there forever no they will after the punya karma is finished they will the quota is finished they have to come back in material world just like they have to take the Just like if you have a bank balance, you go to America and yes. you go you go for holiday, how long you can stay there? As long as you've got money, right? And as soon as the money runs out, yes. oh, I have to go home. <laughs> you know. No more money. Time to go back. So heaven is like that. You go there to enjoy yes. and then you come back. So the gnanis and the yogis, however, they go higher than heaven. Yes. Higher than heaven. Above heaven. there's other planets called mahaloka tapaloka and at the very top of the universe what's at the top of the universe brahmaloka yeah brahmaloka the very top so who goes there gnanis and yogis yeah the gnanis and yogis they why did they go there they also want to do enjoy day something like that. Do they enjoy there? What do they enjoy? It there? is mystic. They want to learn about mystic power. Yeah, they do. They want the mystic. Power. They they go there. They do meditation, and they do yagya also. They do do yoga, meditation. Yogis and gyanis they both meditate. So tapaloka, they're doing meditation, and mahaloka, they're doing yagya. In Brahma Loka, they're 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 doing they're discussing philosophy there. They're talking the scriptures. They talk about the knowledge from different scriptures. 
So, what, they can go there and they can stay there as long as Brahma has life. But with the end of Brahma's life, then what happens? They have to come back. They will come back in the material world. They will take birth. Yeah, the, at the end of Brahma's life, the whole universe is destroyed. Okay. And some, maybe, maybe Brahma will go to the spiritual world. He may be a pure devotee. Not always, but he may be a devotee. And if Brahma is a devotee, then he will go to the spiritual world. And there will be others there also. They may go with Brahma. They may all go together to the spiritual sky. But if he's not, if he's not pure devotee, then he will go into the body of Mahavishnu. And then they'll take birth again. And the, when the next world is created again, when the next creation takes place, they'll take the birth again. Right? But right. what about the devotee? Where do they go? They will go to the spiritual world. Right. Vaikuntha. They go to the Vaikuntha. Right. And when they go there, will they come back? No. Right. They will just... Why will they come back to this place? No way. Yes. No. Yes, yes. Okay, very good. All right, who's going to read next? Who's not read yet today? Smaraj, can I read please? Mary? Okay, who's this? What's your name, Maraji? Akira, sir. Okay, you can read, yes. On the material planet, everyone from Brahma down to the ant is trying to lord it over material nature. And this is the material disease. As long as this material disease continues, the living entity has to undergo the process of bodily change. Whether he takes a, the form of a man, demigod or animal, he ultimately has to endure an unmanifested condition during the two devastations. The devastation during the night of Brahma and the devastation at the end of Brahma's life. If we want to put an end to this process of repeated birth and death, as well as the concomitant factors of old age and disease, we must try to enter the spiritual planet where we can live eternally in the association of Lord Krishna or his plenary expansions, his Narayana forms. Lord Krishna or his plenary expansions dominate every one of these innumerable planets. The fact confirmed in the Shruti Mantras, Iko Vasi Sarvaga, Krishna Idya Iko, Apishpon Bahudya Vo Vabati. Gopala Kapani Panishad 1321. Okay. So we're hearing the better to go to the Vaikuntha, go into the spiritual sky. Don't be stay in the material world because there's annihilation, devastation, end of Brahma's day, end of Brahma's life, two different devastations. So better to go to better to go to the spiritual sky, spiritual world, and can have association with Krishna. Right? Okay, Mary, you can read now. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Uh, no one can dominate Krishna. It is the conditioned soul who tries to dominate material nature and is instead subjected to the laws of material nature and the sufferings of repeated birth and death. The Lord comes here to re-establish the principles of religion and the basic principle is the development of an attitude of surrender to Him. This is the Lord's last instruction in the Bhagavad Gita 18.66. Sawadaman parityaya mam ekam saranam raja. Give up all other processes and just surrender unto me alone. Unfortunately, foolish men have misinterpreted this prime teaching and misled the masses of people in diverse ways. 
people have been urged to open hospitals, but not to educate themselves to enter into the spiritual kingdom by devotional service. They have been taught to take interest only in temporary relief work, which can never bring real happiness to the living entity. They start varieties of public and semi-governmental institutions to tackle the devastating power of nature, advertised as great scholars of uh, power of nature, but they don't know how to pacify insurmountable nature. Many men are advertised as great scholars of the Bhagavad Gita, but they overlook the Gita's message by which material nature can be pacified. Powerful nature can be pacified only by the awakening of God consciousness as clearly pointed out in the Bhagavad Gita 7.14. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, much. Prabhupada is speaking very strongly. All right? What the real problem? The real problems in the world? What's the cure? Mary? How to solve all these problems? By uh, self-realization and God consciousness. Yeah, God consciousness means what? What do we have to do? Uh, we have to realize who we are okay. and uh, we have to realize that uh, who we are and then our nature is actually to serve God, to go back to Godhead. Yeah, we have to surrender, right? Surrender. Yes. Prabhupada quotes the Bhagavad Gita from Krishna. Krishna says, surrender. So this is the problem. People are, they're looking at all the material problems and they're trying to make some solution, a material solution. But the problem is they have not satisfied the person who is controlling the nature. They overlook the message of God. Material nature can be pacified if we satisfy Lord Krishna. So that's what we do, Sankirtan, the chanting of the holy name, then it can pacify Lord Krishna. We need to encourage people to do this more, to take shelter of the holy name. Powerful nature can be pacified by God Consciousness. So Prabhupada says, Bhagavad Gita 7.14, 7.14 says, just surrender to me. Deviyesha gunamayi mama maya duratyaya. Material nature, very difficult to overcome. But if he surrenders to me, he can easily cross beyond it. Okay, who would like to read now? Who's not it? P Punita? Yes, Maharaj, I will read. In this mantra, Sri Ishupanishad teaches us that one must perfectly know both Sambhuti, the personality of Godhead, and Vinasha, the temporary material manifestation, side by side. By knowing the material manifestation alone, one cannot be sa saved, for in the course of nature, there is devastation at every moment. Anahi anani utani kachan dita yamalayam. Nor can one be saved from these devastations by the opening of hospitals. One can be saved only by complete knowledge of the eternal life of bliss and awareness. The whole Vedic scheme is meant to educate men in this art of attaining eternal life. People are often misguided by temporary attractive things based on sense gratification, but service rendered to the sense objects it is both misleading and degrading. Oh, okay. So Prabhupada quotes some things here. The, the meaning is not given, but like that one, Ahani, Ahani, Bhutani, Gashantitya, Yamalayam. It means that everyone goes to everyone's going to die and with death then we go to the temple of Yamaraj. Everybody goes there, <laughs> you know, at the time of death. 
we go. We don't want to wait for that. So devastation, everything's being destroyed. We have to understand the nature of the material world. You see, when we understand the nature of this material world, then we'll never want to come back here to this, to this, this place again. We have to understand how there's no real happiness here. This place is called, and Bhagavad Gita is called Dukalayam, a place of suffering. So the Vedas are to educate us about spiritual life. Oh, there's just a little more, Punida, you can just finish. Okay, Maharaj. We must therefore save ourselves and our fellow men in the right way. There is no question of liking or disliking the truth. It is there. If we want to be saved from repeated birth and death, we must take to the devotional service of the Lord. There can be no compromise, for this is a matter of necessity. Oh. So Prabhupada is telling us very clearly, we cannot compromise. <laughs> Compromise. <laughs> we, we always want to change things. We try to, oh no, it's too difficult. Oh, four principles, too difficult. Sixteen rounds, too difficult. You know, we always want to change things, try to make it easy. But Prabhupada said, no compromising, no adjusting, just accept the truth. So we have to understand the nature of this material world. Material world here is like the prison house. So don't try to stay in the prison house. We should want to get out of the prison house. Right? Get out of the prison house. To get out of the prison house, what do you have to do? You have to follow the laws. You have to be a good citizen. You have to do what you're told. You can't just be, you know, go against, break all the laws and expect to be free. If we disobey the government, if we disobey the rulers, then we get in trouble. So we have to understand there's a supreme ruler behind the world and we have to be obedient to his laws and follow his instructions. And we get this information from the scriptures. The scriptures are there to tell us what we're supposed to do, what are the real teaching. So we cannot say, I didn't know. You know. Somebody may say, I didn't know, I didn't know. But just like the child, if the child puts their hand in the fire, they will get burned. They cannot say, I didn't know. It's no excuse. So we have to understand, ignorance is no excuse. So we try to save people by teaching them this knowledge is so important knowledge of the eternal life. That eternal life is not here, it's not here in this world. We are eternal, we're all souls, but we're taking birth and dying again and again. Now we have the human life, but if next life we become a tree, or if next life we become a dog, that is not very good, is it? Do you want to be a dog? What do you think? Oh, no. Sometimes, sometimes when Prabhupada would say like that, somebody said, Oh, I don't mind to be the dog. The dogs, they have a good time. They play around. And so, then, so Prabhupada said, Then I give you my blessings. I bless you. Become a dog, you know. Of course, intelligent people, they won't want to be a dog. A dog is a miserable life. No, human life is very special. We have the responsibility. That's why we have the scriptures. The dogs, they don't have any scriptures, but we have the scriptures to guide us. So we have to learn. We have to learn this knowledge and try to follow as well. People would say, oh, you know, this is, this is not true. But then they're suffering. When they suffer, then they say, oh, why like this? Because they didn't follow the laws. So we get the reactions. Okay, any questions? So we've been speaking about 
the worship and we, we had first of all knowledge and now we have the worship about the absolute and the relative. So worship of the absolute. We had the worship of the Supreme Lord by devotional service. And what about the relative? How do they worship? Who is worshipping the relative? Who is doing that? Karmis? Yeah. Who, yeah. Are, who are they worshipping? What's their type Jin. of what's their type of worship? Pitru worship. Uh huh? Pitru worship and demigods. Yeah, demigods, right. The demi they worship the demigods or they worship you know they, they worship all the gods. We say, oh, I worship all the gods. They think all the gods are the same. That's very common. People think like that. All the gods. They don't understand. There's a difference. There's one supreme above everyone. So we are trying to educate people, understand things properly. Don't be fooled. Don't be cheated. All the paths are not one. Right? People say, oh, welfare work. They think, you know, feed the poor. Very nice. Yeah, we also distribute food for life. But we also want people to understand the real goal. Just feeding poor people, that's not our real business. Our real work. What is our real work? Punita, what's the real work of a devotee? To serve the, the Lord and His devotees. What about them? To serve. To serve to serve yeah. the Lord and His devotees. Any, yeah. How do you do that? How will you do that? How will you serve the Lord? Um, by chanting the holy name. Yes, very good. Yeah, serve the Lord by chanting His holy name. That's very important. That's the first most important thing. Yes. Any other ways you can serve the Lord? Um, reading his scriptures. Yes. Our glory his name. Yes. Anything? Kirtan. Kirtan, yeah. Maybe also serve the deity in the temple. Serve the deity, cook for the deity, make flower garlands for the deity, make nice dress for the deity, these things. How about serving the devotees? How do you serve the devotees? Um, follow, follow the spiritual master's instructions. Oh. Um, yes. Also, the devotees by offering prasad. Yeah, very good. Yeah, offer the devotees prasadam. Very nice, right? Anything else? Inquiring from them, asking them, how are you, anything I can do for you, can I serve you, can I... And you can also tell them about Krishna. Maybe you read something, maybe you had read something nice in the scriptures, you can tell them about Krishna. Like that, you can share your realizations, you can share your experiences of, about Krishna with them. So like that inquiring and revealing our mind to devotees. This is how we serve the devotees. Very good. Okay, very nice. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any final question here tonight? No questions? Okay, so we'll stop here tonight. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki.
Thank you, Maharaj. Go back to Vrindaki. Go back to Vrindaki. Bye.